Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of One Football Debates. We have the massive question of the week, which is which team is going to win the Champions League? But we've switched it up, we've got three points on offer. We know the Statman Dave is trailing behind, kind of like Roma in the first leg, but we're giving him a chance to come back. Steve House could go four up or Statman could level up with three. All he has to do is choose a team that isn't Real Madrid, because I already know that Steve Harris is going to choose that. Statman, are you going to take the challenge? Are you going to take these three points? Of course I am. I'm going to go for Liverpool. There we go. The challenge is on. So once again, everyone, you're voting for the argument, not for the team. So don't vote for the team that you think you're going to win. Vote for the person, i.e. our two gentlemen, who has put forward the best argument. With that said, let's begin. Real Madrid are going to win the Champions League. They're the best of the four teams last in it. They're the team that's got the pedigree in the final four. They're the team that's won two back-to-back. -back. Unprecedented. They are the team that's going to win three back-to-back -back and probably make it impossible for anybody to match what they've done. They've got a Ronaldo who's supposed to be over the hill, but looks like he's at his absolute peak. They've got the best midfield. They've got the best defence. And if they had a different keeper, they'd be almost unbeatable. There we go. And your reply, Dave? Mo Salah, Mo Salah, running down the wing. We start at Mo Salah, but this Liverpool team has it all. The ability to counter-attack, to win the ball high in midfield, was so important versus Manchester City. For me, it's Real Madrid's kryptonite. If Liverpool could do the same job that they did on Manchester City, after, of course, th thumping Roma, that's a simple tie for Liverpool. It's going to be simple. Liverpool are going to make it six times. I can't believe I've just said that. I know it's hard for you to say as a Man United fan, so I'm going to let Stephen House, and you can go first in terms of replying to what Dave said, but give him a chance. <laughs> Manchester United, who are garbage at the moment and get beat off 20th in the Premier League, couldn't, beat, couldn't get beat by Liverpool. Liverpool haven't beat Manchester United since Jurgen Klopp and Jose Mourinho have both been at the club together. Ashley Young kept Mo Salah quiet. Real Madrid are going to play with them, bitch slap them and send them packing on their way to 12. That's what's going to happen. The fact that you even think Liverpool are the fourth choice out of the team that's left in the semi-final. Roma are going to deal with Liverpool because they're a more complete side. And if it wasn't Madrid in the final and it was Munich in the final, they'll deal with them while texting with their other phone and checking out girls in the first row of the stands. Madrid are going to absolutely play with Liverpool if they come up against them. They don't have the tactical nows. Jurgen Klopp in finals, like a chocolate teapot, mate. <laughs> and you reply to that, Dave? Quite funny what you're saying about Jurgen Klopp, but he's evolved his football. He's evolved his style. You know, the 4-2-3-1 that he played at Borussia Dortmund was high pressing, high octane. At Liverpool, it's very different, a 4-3-3. And what did we see last weekend? Or last week, should I say? Juventus hammer Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. 3-1. They deserve to go through. Juventus completely outplayed Madrid in that second leg. At home, Real Madrid were. And if you take what they did and you look at how this Liverpool system, it's pretty much the same. You know, of course, uh, Allegri going with a 4-3-3. And that's what Liverpool have played all season. You know, we saw PSG cause Real Madrid problems. We've seen Juve cause some problems playing the similar system. And what the hell does Jurgen Klopp play for Liverpool? The 4-3-3. Firmino, Salah and Sadio Mane. Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo's the top scorer in the Champions League this season. 15 goals. But you take about what the Liverpool players are doing this season. Mo Salah, eight goals. Firmino, eight goals. And of course, Sadio Mane, seven goals. They're the highest scoring front three in the Premier competition in Europe this season. And that is why they're going to beat Real Madrid. The combination of tactics and that front three, they're absolutely on fire. Mo Salah, 40 goals in 45 games this season. The Egyptian has exploded. Yes, Ashley Young had him in his back pocket. But Ashley Young is a, one of the best, one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League. Mo Salah's been doing it in the Champions League this season. He's been doing it in the Premier League. And up against someone like Marcelo, who defensively was caught out massively against Juve, we're going to see Liverpool taking home the title. So on that notion in terms of tactics and can Madrid hold back Mo Salah, your reply, Stephen? You have to give credit to what Dave's saying and you have to give realism to what Dave's saying and Juventus did deserve to go through, but they didn't go through. And ultimately, that's what this Madrid team is about. They get results. And that's what Jurgen Klopp's not about. He doesn't get results in the games that matter. He bottles, he folds, and he's not able to do it on the biggest stage like in cup finals. Yes, Liverpool play the same sort of system that Juventus play, but Madrid didn't play their usual system against Juventus at home. I think that with the 3-0 yeah, away tie... No, you know, mentality, Dave. I'm talking about pure mentality. They didn't play the same way that they usually play because they thought the tie at 3-0 was already done. Juventus come out, they shell-shocked them with an early goal. 
And somehow, because it's just destiny, Cristiano Ronaldo, 91st minute, 98th minute, if we're being technical, steps up, puts Madrid into the semi-final. That's the way it's going to go in the semi-final, and that is the way it's going to go in the final. Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be lifting, I don't even know what the, the name is for the 12th one, a shitload of European Cups, that's what. So Dave, in terms of Real Madrid, what's their biggest weakness going against Liverpool? Well, I think the biggest weakness, of course, what I mentioned before is the space that you can attack behind the fullbacks. You're thinking Marcelo and Danny Carvajal push up really high. So you, you look at Liverpool and their system. Firmino's going to pull the centre-halves out of position. Then Mo Salah and Sadio Mane are going to make those runs inside. They've been doing it for the entire Champions League so far. And with someone like James Milner, who's got seven assists in the Champions League this season, three more than any other player, he's been beating records since about 2009 in terms of the amount of assists he's got. Because they put about 19 goals he past can, he, can, he, can find, he can find these players that are making the movement in behind. And that tactically is what Real Madrid were weak at. But then again, you, you, you look at the Juve game, you see Sami Khedira and Matuidi play in midfield. You look at this Liverpool team, James Milner and Oxley chamberlain they're going to do the same job. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to win the ball high. And that's where they're going to transition and quickly break on Real Madrid. Casemiro had a terrible game against Juventus. He won one tackle in the first half. Usually Casemiro's on like four or five tackles won. And again, he was exposed by the quick counter-attack of Juventus. It was simple for them. They got the ball out to the right. They crossed it to the back post. Liverpool could do the same thing. With Sadio Mane running onto the back post, spinning in there. You're thinking Trent Alexander-Arnold is one of the breakout players of the season. He was unbelievable against City in both those legs. You see his, his ability to put balls into the penalty area from that right-hand side to the back post that Juventus did the same thing on them. For me, this is all about Liverpool taking that sort of European Cup with their style, their aggression, their ability to create chances in behind the Real Madrid fullbacks. It's going to be simple for them. So then, Steve House, in terms of Real Madrid, how can they exploit Liverpool's defence or their general tactics? Liverpool's defence is terrible. That's the top of bottom of it. Now, I know they've got a fair few amount of clean sheets, but ultimately the defence is what lets them down. They knock the ball around in their defence. If Liverpool, if Liverpool turn over possession in the areas around Benzema, around Cristiano Ronaldo, they're going to get caught out. Real Madrid are an absolutely belting counter-attacking side. They're a joy to watch. They move it from back to front with absolute lightning pace and players go all over the show. Cristiano Ronaldo would absolutely punish Liverpool, but it's not even about Liverpool because Liverpool aren't going to get past Roma. This is a Real Madrid side that's looking at winning four Champions League in five years. This is going to go down as one of the greatest sides in history and they're not going to get beat by a side that can't even beat Manchester United in the Premier League. <laughs> so then, finally, in terms of your final <laughs> argument, your final 30 seconds, I, I, Dave. Before, ooh, ooh. before we do this, can I just ask you a question? OK. How many goals did Manchester City score against Liverpool over the two legs in the Champions League, Steve? It's good one, mate. Yeah, how many do they average per game this season in all competitions? Probably more Three. than Three, you're correct. So Liverpool's <laughs> defence is a lot better than you're thinking. Virgil van Dijk has completely changed this defence. You mentioned City are a counter -attack they've got more me. clean sheets than any other team in the Premier League since van Dijk joined. They've massively improved. £75 million was a great investment. And ultimately, Benzema ain't going to play. He's going to go with Bale again. The Madrid team is going to be broken. Liverpool are going to win the Champions League. Well, OK, I'll give you your 30 seconds to give your final statement. Stephen Housen, you can go first. Real Madrid have built a dynasty. They've already won back-to-back -back Champions Leagues, which hasn't been done in the Champions League era. Last team to do it was AC Milan, when it was still called the European Cup. This Real Madrid team are going for history. They're going to win three on the bounce, and they're going to do it because they've got the best player in the world, in Cristiano Ronaldo, up front, bagging the goals, left, right and centre. And not only that, they've got a wonderful midfield behind him with Modric, Casemiro and Cruz. Are you telling me that Wijnaldum and Henderson and Milner are going to stand up to that? Behave yourself. They've got to get past Roma first and they're not going to do that. It's going to be four out of five for Real Madrid this year. And Dave, your closing argument... It's interesting when Steve goes and tacks Wijnaldum when he's not even been playing. It's been Oxley chamberlain Have you seen him banging the goals in from range? I have. You haven't. But in terms of why Liverpool are going to win the Champions League, it's all about their front three. Firmino, Salah and, of course, Sadio Mane. For me, the most complete front three in world football right now. And the Egyptian winger has just been fantastic. His composure in front of goal, his cockiness, is going to really catch out Marcelo, especially at right back. And Liverpool are going to take the trophy home. With Virgil van Dijk as a centre-half from Southampton, Liverpool are going to recruit again from Southampton. They're going to sign some more players from Southampton and maybe win it back-to-back. -back. Simple as that. All the Liverpool fans, you've got to vote for me, not Steven Alisson. He's a fraud, he's rubbish, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. With that final plea to people to vote for him, 
Obviously, guys, you know who you need to pick. Whoever's argument you thought was the strongest, remember, Fine. Statman Dave is fighting for three points. Four nil. But Steve Hansel is going to go four nil up if he's able to get the vote. So once again, go to the corner, click that little button, hit up the comment section, let us know your thoughts as well. Once again, guys, thank you for joining us. Make sure you check out that YouTube channel, which will be in the bio and in the comment section. And no doubt, they're going to comment as well, so you can follow them like that as well. Once again, guys, we want to know your opinion. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Peace.